Welcome to the heart of American innovation manufacturing might. This is Ford and mad money comes from the Motor City now. My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to a special Invest in America Motor City edition of Mad Money. Coming to you from Ford's Michigan Assembly Modification Center, where I'm honored to be joined with some of Ford's finest. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to help make some money. My job is not to entertain, but to educate, teach, put it in context, call me 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Wall Street. Wall Street can be so dense sometimes. Times like now, where the market has spoken. And it doesn't care for the likes of Ford Motor, where we are right now for our Best in America show, because it only has eyes for Tesla. The idea that there could be two auto companies worth investing in, one that's fully automated for electric vehicles, and one that uses lots of humans to make iconic nameplate cars and trucks, is considered sacrilege and hazardous to your portfolio. Only one works, and that one is Tesla which rallied more than 5% today. Even on a bad day for the averages, Dow lost 245 points. S&P declined 0.47%. NASDAQ dipped 0.16%. But you know what? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You see, I don't think that Ford and Tesla are mutually exclusive. There's no zero sum here. I think there's real value here in Ford. Buy, buy, buy. More value than is captured by its $14 share price, even with that 4.2% yield. More value than its agreement to use Tesla's charging network that allowed the stock to jump three points since late last month. More value even than the possibility of an earnings explosion as the internal combustion engine business spews cash towards Ford's future electric dominance. Do not get me wrong. You got my blessing to own Tesla? Yeah, you can do that too. Because it's got incredible growth potential, Rivian just joined its charging network today. Perhaps another reason for Tesla's 14-point gain. But my travel trust has chosen Ford. We own the stock of Ford for the club. Why? Because I want value. So far, it's only been okay. All right, I get that. But from what I've saw today with my own eyes and what I've heard from CEO Jim Farley, I think American ingenuity and innovation here at Ford are undervalued. Undervalued versus Tesla. And possibly even everything else made in America. Undervalued things like, like this. You see, like my desk, like this soundboard, which is being powered tonight by an F-150 Lightning made by the great people at Ford Motor. And maybe that's what's wrong with this market. It doesn't care about anything outside of tech. And because Tesla's considered a tech company and not a manufacturing company, Wall Street acts like it's not hostage to the broader economy. While Ford's just one seething Mustang Mach-E right here, trapped by the Federal Reserve. Somehow, they forgot it's an automaker. I know, I know, eyes can be deceiving. Maybe I'm staring into an abyss of cars and trucks that look like they'll be sold now, but only won't find buyers. Because why? Because the Fed's made financing too expensive. Maybe Ford stock only seems cheap, but in a month, the collective bargaining begins with the United Auto Workers, and that could sharply uh, maybe lead to higher wages, perhaps even a strike. And that would make a mockery of the current estimates on Wall Street. Walter Ruther might be dancing his grave. But Tesla? They're aggressively non-union and mostly automated. Wow. Now, today was a microcosm of what both ails and helps the market, especially stocks like Ford. Just as the rally in Tesla seems long in the tooth, we've got still one more turbocharged move in this market's undisputed leader, and that is NVIDIA. Remember, own it, don't trade it, wouldn't they name the dog after it otherwise. When you see NVIDIA roaring up 11 bucks today, you know the same narrow collection of artificial intelligence stocks will rally right along with it. NVIDIA has broad shoulders, though not broad enough to hold up the entire market. It's almost as if it's by rote. We hear rumors of huge orders for NVIDIA, all related to its only game in town, high-end graphics cards that have taken the world by storm since chat GPT surfaced list of ever. I believe the rumors. Why? Because right now, NVIDIA's stock seems really expensive. But if this is like the NVIDIA of old, the actual earnings will come in much higher than expected, and the stock will look cheap in retrospect. Now, I am concerned about the increasing narrowness of the market. I've cautioned you that I don't like this kind of ridiculously narrow action with really only two leaders. 
Two leaders, Tesla and NVIDIA. Like when you're in the end of the Magnificent Seven, when most of the heroes are dead. Are these Steve McQueen and Yul Brenner? Who knows? We know that the narrower this market gets, the less likely we'll have another leg higher. We also know there are tons of Fed officials speaking this week, and they seem totally at odds with each other. I bet they did nothing last week simply because they don't know what to do. There's no consensus. Maybe next month they'll be on the same page. Maybe they won't until they get to Jackson Hole in August. More on this Fed discord later. Remember what's the biggest sticking point with the Fed? The ever-rising price of housing, which is fueled by a robust labor market. We have a true shortage of houses in this country, perhaps as many as two to four million. The home builders have been reluctant to build more homes for fear of being stuck with them if the Fed gaffs the economy with higher rates. That would jack up mortgage rates, which would crush the earnings of the home builders. But today we learned they're finally putting up more homes. More homes than we thought, 1.6 million rather than 1.3 million Wall Street was expecting. If they keep that up, maybe we can finally put a dent in housing inflation. And that would be a real change. Something that would let the Fed put a stop to its relentless rate hikes. If we get a combination of high unemployment and cheaper housing, maybe the Fed can stop tightening without having to obliterate the entire economy. The fabled hard landing scenario where indeed there's nothing stopping us from getting an incredibly nasty recession. Ford certainly needs this cessation of rates to happen. Remember, most cars and trucks are bought on credit, and the cost of financing keeps soaring. At what point does it get high enough to price out most buyers, especially the small, medium-sized businesses that are the bedrock customer base for the F-150 and the wildly popular F-150 Lightning? I say we don't want to find out. You might ask yourself, why is Ford stock all caught up in this minutiae of the Fed? Why, for example, does it matter what Jay Powell says when he's, fed, when he's grilled on the Capitol Hill when he's filled both tomorrow and Thursday. And that gets us full circle to what you're up against if you own the stock. You may look at all this manufacturing might making these iconic products for years and years and years. And you might figure there's demand for all the products they make so the problems will keep on them because the stuff just looks so fabulous. But the fact is, if the Fed goes too far with its rate hikes, it's this place that gets hurt. That's always been the case. Wall Street's betting, it will always be. Something it just doesn't consider when it comes to the stock of Tesla. Is that fair? Well, as you watch tonight, you can decide. We don't think of fair or unfair when it comes to managing portfolio. We just think of value with a real catalyst and a CEO who's about to change a culture so that the company can make money in any environment. That's what I see happening here. Bottom line, if I'm right about Ford, this stock could get back to its high of 25, where it was in January 2022. But if I'm wrong, I have to tell you, I think the downside... I'm calling it minimal. That's right, minimal. Investing is all about managing risk and reward. At these prices, I'll take Ford over Tesla any day. And believe me, I like them both. Let's take some questions. Hi, Jim. My name is Elizabeth. How are you, Elizabeth? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes, great to be here. So I work here at the Michigan Assembly Plant as the environmental engineer, and I'm really excited and proud of the products that we make here at the site. So my question for you today is, given our current climate, how would you invest $1,000? $1,000, okay. I am a very conservative person, so, so if you gave me $1,000, it would go in an index fund. I know that people would say, well, listen, we want to put it in this stock or that stock. But I am, in the end, someone who wants diversification on the first $10,000. So I know it's boring. But I got to do it that way because I don't want to encourage too much speculation. So, boring yawn S&P 500 index fund. Thank you. Right. Wish I could be more exciting, but that's not what the game's about. Yes, sir. Hey, Jim. My name's Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, hey, I'm happy to be here too. Um, you know, as a retail investor, I like to take my profits out and put in blue chips, kind of like millennial blue Sounds chips. Sounds good to me. I like Starbucks, Google, Meta, Hasbro. But I've been on the fence about Palantir for a while. Ever since I've been buying it, it's been losing. One of my girlfriends said that it might be an evil company, but what do you think, Palantir in the long run? What an interesting question. It was downgraded today by someone who went too far, that it went too far too fast, from 10 to 16. I went over that quarter nine ways to Sunday. That was the first good quarter they had. Really good people are telling me to go along with it. I say you buy Palantir. I think it goes higher. Good question, good question. Thank you. Another one. Hello, Jim. My name is Olin Price, 29 years at Ford, Hunter Alignment. I'm new to the market. Um, haven't did a whole lot of investing. Okay. Um, testing the waters with Cash our app, see how it goes. And I want to know what's the best way to really get started. Okay, I have to tell you, and I know this is going to sound like it's child's play, but when I hired people at my old hedge fund, I did a paper portfolio. I said, you guys, what stocks do you want? And they thought I was going to buy their stocks, but I was trying to get their feet wet. 
so that they knew what it was like to take a loss. They knew what it was like to have a good high from a good stock and not cut it off when they should have just been ka-ching, ka-ching. So I suggest you watch some stocks on paper. It's okay. I mean, I know you're going to see something that like, went up too much. You say, oh, my God, I only did this on paper. But that's how you have to do it until you feel comfortable. Then once you did, you can buy your first one. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Jim Kramer. My name is Kenya Burrell. I've been with the company for 23 years. I'm currently working as a government regulations coordinator. I have a few questions. One, is it a good, do you think it's a good time right now to be investing in stocks? And also, do you believe that we're nearing the end of the recession? And lastly, where do you see the market in a year from now? Okay, it's a great question because what's happened is, is that uh, a lot of what's happening in the economy is driven by the Federal Reserve. It's really boring. I wish it weren't the case. But it is. I can't fight that. But I think the really good companies are going to transcend that. And I think that you're going to be fine in stocks next year at this time. But I would say right now, hold back a little. I've been telling people, don't put a lot of money to work right now. We just had a huge run. When it comes in, we can do some buying. But not all at once. That never works. Thank you very much. All right, listen, you heard me. I'm going to take Ford over Tesla any day. And believe me, I like them both. On Mad Money tonight, we're coming to you straight from Motor City. We're here at Forest Michigan Assembly Modification Center. And we have a special two-parter with the CEO, Jim Farley, that you do not want to miss. Jim Kramer, Jim Farley, coming straight from Dearborn. Ford! Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.